this is one, and this is one. Then you can construct this uh, disjunctive form, complete disjunctive form as follows. You look, at, you look at all those that are one, and then if it's zero, you know x1 bar. It means not x1, not x2, not x3. So this means not x1, and not x2, and not x3, and x4. Or not x1, and x2, and not x3, and x4. And the last one, x1, x2, and x2, and x3, x4. So it's a way of going from truth tables to this thing. And once you have it, you can construct a Boolean circuit that computes these functions for any of the input, you can realize it. First row, the input gates x1, xn. Now for every clause, uh, you have, you form, there are many clauses. Uh, sorry, let's call it a, a1. So these are all end. Of course, you, you, I mean, you can do it. Boom, 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 boom. So you know what I mean. You can easily. And then you have the all. You combine the alls. Of course, there are many, but you can just do it one at a time. And you can easily implement. So there is a way for every Boolean function to construct a circuit. Alas, for most Boolean functions, there are many, 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 many gates. So if you have an average Boolean function, we have uh, to the power n over 2 clauses is an exponential number of gates for most. But it is, I know, I can do it. So now let's look at one of any of the many so-called NP-hard problems. Perhaps the easiest one to implement in a Boolean circuit is a click problem. You have a party, an arbitrary party of n people some people love each other, some people hate each other. So we have the love-hate graph. So input, a graph, but it's a, as far as Boolean variable, for any pair of vertices, i and j, x i j. So is the love each other or hate each other? It's zero if i hates j and 1 if i uh, loves j. Okay. So, you want to decide, are there a clique of great people who all love each other? Uh, Kenneth is an expert in Ramsey theory, in which can you find out great people who mutually love each other or great people who mutually hate each other? Forget about hating. <laughs> Only the question is, uh, can you find, can you decide fast whether, of course, there is a way. You have n people. So look at all the anxious k subsets. And for each of them, find out. Do they all love each other? Or at least two people uh, hate each other. For example, if I pick uh, Art, uh, Abigail, and Matthew, do you all three love each other? <laughs> okay. okay, this is already done. But if you don't, I keep going, keep trying. Eventually, and for each and every one of the n to three a subset of three people, they all hate each other. Uh, no, not them. All mutual love each other. It's possible. Some people love each other, but it's not a click. It's not all uh, love each other. Then I'm done. So this is the algorithm. So to phrase it as a Boolean function for three plans, but then analogously. So you have n choose, n choose two input variables, the edges, uh, or the love or hate, uh, n minus one n. And you can easily formulate it as a Boolean function with the negation xi1, I saw x kln, uh, sorry, x kln, comma, uh, uh, James times x kln comma Janos 
times x uh, uh, Janos comma Neil and so on. For every subset of three people, you can write in the Boolean function xi1, xi2, xi3 for all triplets. This is whether there exists a, tri a click of size 3. But the number of three, a click of size k, so this is the click function, f sub k. I know that there exists a Boolean circuit. That exists. I can build a Boolean circuit computing this Boolean function such that if I enter for an arbitrary graph, I just enter uh, that love, hate, uh, love, hate, love, 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 hate, whether the output, the true, true, false, you can find K people who love each other or K people who hate each other. So you can do it with that circuit. Question. If K is not constant, but if K is, for example, the square root of N, can you do such a Boolean circuit that only this, uh, requires polynomially many gates? The NP not equal to P problem is equivalent to the non-existence of such things. There does not exist an infinite family of Boolean circuits that, or any such tentative, requires more than polynomially many gates. There does not exist uh, n to the power of 100 of a uh, it's uh, even at 100. And this is completely obvious that they don't exist. Why should they exist? This is so complicated. In the case of the other uh, of the Eulerian pass, it was so obvious that you can do it. Even though a priori, the completely boot forcing, is look at all the possible edges and see which of them give you. But very soon, people. And Shannon already proved it, that it's not possible. A heuristic proof, and you go. Before that, let me digress. Another stupid question. Many people think that they do not, do not know whether e plus pi is rational or not. That's my favorite analogy. You'll be super famous, so e is an exercise that is not a rational number, it's a rational exercise for you. Even you can do it. Not so easy, it's pi. This is a Lambert, got famous, but 1750 for proving it. Then Lindemann got more famous by proving it's transcendental. But never mind. You'll be super famous if you can prove that this is irrational. Even more famous if you can prove it, it's rational. <laughs> but don't <laughs> be I am 100%, more than 100, 200% sure that this is irrational. But I have no clue how to prove it. So it's a nice challenge to prove that any given specific uh, number you can write down is irrational. Square root of 2, I can, even I can prove uh, that it's irrational. But if the spy is wide open to prove it, but I know for sure that it is irrational. Why? Because the Aleph real numbers and the only Aleph zero rational number. If you take a random number, real number, the probability that is rational is Aleph zero over Aleph, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny zero. The probability is zero that is rational. Of course, some infinite series, so sigma, oil the oil, oil proof that this is irrational, because this is king queen. So superficially, it looks that this may also be irrational. But if you thought cut, cut 1 or cut 2, cut 1 or cut 2, you do. Okay, cut 2. You know that this you can write. So this infinite series is rational exercise for you. But this is obviously rational. It's an exercise a freshman, a, a dumb freshman can do. <laughs> this is no, no freshman smart, no math smart uh, can do it in close form. So unless it's an obvious reason that an infinite series converges to something rational, it's probability one irrational. Because probability is rational too. Ditto for 
the uh, MP card. Why? And this is the argument due to Senon. Beautiful piece of argument. Look at the tentative polynomial size circle. Boolean circle. <coughs> so once again, this is from the click function. X12, X M minus 1. Or uh, uh, more generally, any N gates. And you have normally are complicated, blah 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 blah. And suppose you have capital N number of gates. In the very end you have an output gate. How many such circuits are there? I told you the storeroom only has ten kind of possibilities. So first, every circuit has to decide, who are my parents? Every circuit has two things coming from it. So every circuit decides, who are my parents? So you can decide, at most, n square parents per thing. Then, every, every gate, so every gate, every gate decides who are the parents, there are n gates. So it's most n square possibilities for, of course, it's n to, uh, yeah, it is n, yeah, n square. Yeah. Then you decide, who am I? Which of the 10 kinds of varieties of Boolean uh, components for two variable functions? There are only 10. Most of them will be gibberish. Most of them will be illegal circuits because uh, you cannot have cycles and uh, you can have complete nonsense. So most of them, so this is a very crude upper bound. But look, this is tiny. It's exponential growth. How many Boolean functions are they? Remember the truth tables. You have to the power n possibilities. For each of them, you decide true or false. Two to the power, two to the power n. Doubly exponential. This is peanuts. So if you look at the random circuit, the probability that it can be realized with polynomially many. So if you take the point of n. Polynomial, polynomially many uh, gates. It's tiny. And it's kept an angle bigger and bigger and bigger. It's tiny and tiny and tiny. You may say that a Googleplex, a Google to the power. It's a big number. But it's nothing, nothing, nothing in the long run compared to 2 to the power, to the power n. So, probabilistically, it's extremely unlikely. So unless there is an obvious reason why it should be simple and people try very hard and somebody didn't find it, there is no reason. So it's obvious to me that it is not possible. And you take exponentially. If you cannot do it with polynomially many gates. So this is a very convincing proof of, unfortunately, that I'm qualified to the Clay Foundation. And if you did, I won't get it because it was well known. Nothing here in this talk is new, only the emphasis, emphasis in the philosophical conclusion. Let me conclude with one of the major arguments of the mainstream computer scientists in favor of P not being equal to NP. This is a complete nonsense. So even though I believe that P is not equal to NP, I don't buy the major heuristic argument, one of them at least, that they come up with. There's a whole book by uh, Gary and Johnson, and now it has been extended with a collection of many, many NP hard problems. And it says, if you have found one of them, you have found all of them. If there is a polynomial algorithm to prove click, for example, then the is from Hamilton. This is all reduction. It's called NP hard. It says, all these smart people, all these times, try to prove all of these problems, and they come up. So it's extremely unlikely that all of them so this is very stupid argument. <laughs> because in my humble opinion, no offense to the people, sometimes it takes human effort to prove that something is NP-hard. You reduce it 
to another known NP hard problem by doing some usually tedious, sometimes continuous argument. But since humans did it, these are all trivial reductions. So way back be, uh, before Cardano, they didn't know whether you can solve a cubic equation in radicals. So we know since Babylon how to solve a quadratic equation. And then somebody could have said, all these smart people try to solve x cubed minus 2x plus 5 equals 0, x cubed minus 7x plus 5 equals 0, and so on. So it's unlikely that it's possible to solve it by radical. But they were stupid. They're all trivially equivalent. And before Cardano, they grew up in Rome. Because Cardano came up with a nice, not so nice, but nice enough, something made to know, equation for the cubic. I don't know it by heart, but I can find it. If you give me 10 minutes, I can produce it from scratch, for make a noise with. And even uglier, for quartic, somebody else, I forgot who, to uh, And then they were stumped with fives. And then famously, Abel and Galois approved that it's not possible to solve it by radicals. But <laughs> there, argument that for or against was completely flawed because they're all trivially equivalent to other. So my argument is much better. So I hope that I convinced you that the RH and P equality are absolutely true. It's still fun. It's still a challenge to try to prove it. Go ahead. You make a million dollars and probably you can do TV commercials, and it can even well uh, ten times as much, uh, and so on. So it's not. Go ahead, and be f and you be famous, and you be rewarding. But the truth value of both of them will not be increased even by an epsilon. Thank you very much.